Right, so here again we're going to have a look at the 2016 Maths Higher Level Leaving Cert Paper 1 and now we're on question uh, 9. So let's have a look at question 9. This is the last question in this paper. So here we're going to have a look at uh, this particular pattern here. So we're going to move from the origin out here 4 units, then we're going to turn left, move up here 2 units, turn left again, move out here 1 unit, turn left, down half a unit, turn left, quarter, turn left, one-eighth, and so on. So at each um, at each point we're going to turn left and move half the previous distance. So at the four, two, one, half, quarter, one-eighth, and so on. Okay, so um, how many stages, how many of these individual stages has the point completed when it has, has traveled a total distance along its path of 7.9375 units. So we can see here this is 4 units, this is 2 units, so that's a total of 6 units, plus 1 is 7 units, and so on. So how many of these stages will it take before we get to 7.9375 units? Okay, so let's just work that out. Um, now, if we take our numbers, our individual distances, we have 4, we've moved 4 units, then we move two units, then we move one unit, then a half unit, then a quarter unit, and so on. This turns out to be a geometric sequence. And we can see that A here is 4, our first term is 4, and what we're doing is multiplying each term by half. <coughs> so our R here is half. Now we want to move a total distance of 7.9375 units. So what we're going to do here is use, uh, we've got to add these up, in other words, to get uh, 7.9375 units. So we're going to use the formula to sum to n terms, sum to n terms of a geometric sequence, and that's just a times 1 minus r to the power of n all over 1 minus r. Now in our case, we want our sum to n terms to be 7.9375. Our a, our first term here is 4. We have 1 minus our r, which is a half. That's the power of n. We don't know what n is. We need to find out how many uh, stages we need to move to achieve this distance here in units. So we don't know what n is. So we divide by 1 minus half. Okay, so next line then is going to be 7.9375. Uh, um, now, <clears throat> what I'll do here is 1 minus a half on the bottom here is a half. Divide that half into 4, and that'll give us 8. 4 divided by a half is 8. So that's 1 minus half to the power of n here. And uh, that's that bit done. Okay, so next line then, I'm just going to divide across by 8. So I'm going to divide this by 8 and this side here by 8. So that'll give me 0 0.99218. Um, 9921875 and that's equal to 1 minus half to the power of n. Now I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides to get rid of this 1 here and I'm also going to multiply across by minus 1 at the same time because if I subtract 1 here I'm going to end up with a negative value on this side I'll also have this negative value on this side as well so I'm going to just multiply across by minus 1 at the same time. So subtract 1 from both sides I will get 0 0.0078125 that's going to give me half to the power of n okay now I've also changed signs by the way as well okay so next um, uh, okay so our variable here is a power so what I'm going to do is get the log of both sides so I'm going to get the log of 0 0.0078125 and that's going to give me the log of half to the power of n. Bring this n down here in front, so that gives me log 0.0078125 is equal to n times log half. Uh, so now divide across by log half and that will give me n here. So I need to do log 0.0078125 all divided by log half. That'll give me an n value here of, this works out nice and neatly here, uh, an n value is 7. So we need to move uh, 7 units, or 7 stages rather, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
So just one more stage here will give us a total distance of 7.9375 units. Okay, so that's the first, uh, first step. Second step then, or the second stage here, is uh, find the maximum distance the point can move along its path if it continues in this pattern indefinitely. So this is really the sum of um, the sum of the series, or the sequence rather, uh, to infinity. And again we have a formula for that, it's a over 1 minus r, so that's just simply 4 is our a, 1 minus a half here. When you do that you get a half into 4 here which is 8. So the maximum distance we're going to move is 8 units. That's the second part. Uh, next part then is to complete the second row of the table below showing the changes to the x-coordinate um, the first nine times, okay, so this is the first nine stages, the point moves to the new position. Hence or otherwise find the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of the final position that the point is approaching if it continues indefinitely in this pattern. Okay, so the change is in the x. So we can see that it moved four units to the right, first of all. Then it didn't move any distance in the x direction because it moved vertically. Then it moved to the left one unit. So that's minus one unit in the x direction. So after that it moved um, vertically downwards. Um, so it didn't move any distance in the x direction. So we're going to put a zero here. Um, it then moved to the right and it actually moved to the right a quarter. Uh, a quarter then didn't move any distance, then it moved minus 1 16th, then it didn't move any direction in the x direction, and then finally it moved 1 over, one over 64 units uh, in the positive x direction. Okay, so these are our changes in our x. Now our changes in our y, so you can see initially what happens is, um, if you look at our our graph here, it doesn't move at all in the y direction initially. So we're going to put a zero in first. Then it moves two units vertically in the y direction, then again zero. So what's happening here is every second stage we're going to get a zero. It starts with zero, then it'll move vertically, then the next stage is zero, then it'll move vertically, then the next stage is zero, and so on. So <clears throat> It's going to move a zero direction in the y, zero units in the y direction, then two units plus two, then zero, then minus. Uh, that's going to be minus a half actually. Then zero, then plus one eighth. It's moving in that direction straight up, so that's plus, and it's going to be plus one eighth, and so on. So I'll just stick these values into this table again here. Okay. So initially we said it didn't move in the y direction. Then it moved two units vertically upwards. Then it didn't move um, in the y direction. Then it was minus a half. Then zero here again. It's going to be zero every second time here, in fact. This value here is going to be one eighth. And this value here is going to be minus one over 32. OK, so that's the table filled out. Um, the second part of this question just asks us to find, hence or otherwise, so we're going to do the hence bit here if you like, so we're going to find the final, the x and the y coordinates of the final position. So if we were to take this into infinity if you like, or take it into its maximum um, number of stages, what will be the coordinates of the uh, final uh, point? So we're going to use, um, really what we're going to do is we're going to take, if we take the x values here first of all, for example, if you look at these, we've got a plus 4, uh, minus 1, so we're going to take, we're going to have 4, then minus 1, then 1 quarter, then minus 1 sixteenth. These are the x values, this is the x direction now. So minus 1 sixteenth, and then 1 over 64. So really what we're going to do is we're going to add all of these up, and when we add all these up, that will give us our final position in the x in the x direction. Now again, these numbers are actually in geometric sequence as well, where a is uh, four, 
And now what do we have to do to each number to get the next term? Well, we multiply 4 by minus something anyway. So our R is going to be, let's say, minus. And to go from 4 to 1, we're going to multiply by a quarter. So it's going to be minus a quarter. Now that seems to work the whole way along. Multiply minus by minus, you get plus. Multiply 1 by a quarter, you get a quarter. Multiply plus by minus, you get minus. And a quarter by a quarter is 1 16th. And it works here as well. So this R here is our... Um, uh, this is uh, the number that we multiply each term by to get the next term. If we look at the y values then, <coughs> y values, again we need to add up all these um, non-zero y values and that will give us the final position of our y uh, coordinates. So what have we got? We've got 2, we've got minus a half, we've got 1 eighth, uh, we've got minus 1 over 32 and so on. Now, again, our A here, this is a geometric sequence again. Our A is 2 in this case, and our R in this case is going to be minus, um, minus a quarter again, actually. So R here is going to be minus 1 quarter. So let me see, does that work? Minus times plus is minus, 4 eighths, 32. Yep, that works again. Okay, so really what we've got to do here is find the uh, sum to infinity the sum to infinity of our x-coordinate, the sum to infinity of our um, y values here to give us our y-coordinate. So let's do that. So uh, let's take x first. So we're going to do sum to infinity of our x values here. So that will be, it's going to be a, which is 4, over 1 minus r, which is 1, minus minus is plus, 1 quarter, so that will give me uh, 1 plus quarter, 1 a quarter, 3.2, 3.2. So that's my x coordinate. Let's have a look at y. Again, it's s uh, infinity here again. This time my a is 2, and 1 minus minus a quarter, 1 plus a quarter. So in this case, that will give me 1.6. So my final position, my final position will be the x is 3.2 and the y will be 1.6. 3.2 and 1.6. Let's just have a look at where that is. Would that be about right? Well, 3, that's about 2, 3, 3.6 and 1.2. Yeah, that looks about right, 1.6 here, yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the next uh, question then. Okay, so this is a separate question, really. This is to do with a, ma a male bee comes from an unfertilized egg. Uh, that is, he has a female parent, <coughs> uh, but he does not have a male parent. And a female bee comes from a fertilized egg. That means she has a female parent and a male parent. So, uh, let's see. Okay, we have this table here. Um, so the following diagram shows the ancestors of a certain male bee. So this is our male bee here. Um, <clears throat> so the male bee um, comes from an unfertilized egg. He has a female parent, female parent, but does not have a male parent. The female comes from a fertilized egg. So this female comes from a female and a male. The male comes from just a female. This female comes from a female and a male, and so on. Okay, so we have generation 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 here. So it says continue the diagram to G5. So we've got to fill out these bits here. So let's do that. Okay, so this is a female. So the female is going to come from a male and a female. So we're going to have female and uh, male. The male will just come from uh, one parent, so that will be just female. And this female will come from female and male. Okay, so again we seem to have a sequence of numbers here. 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. Um, if you look at these, I'll just write them out here. Uh, this is 1 here. Then we got one again. Here we have two. Here we have one, two, three. 
Here we have one, two, three, four, five here, and so on. This is actually, if you look at it, it's actually a Fibonacci sequence, uh, which means that you add, uh, let's say these two num, these two terms here will give you this term here when you add them. Two and one will give you three. Three and two will give you five. Five and three will give you the next one, which is actually eight. Um, and eight and five will give you thirteen, and so on. So it's actually a Fibonacci Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so that's uh, that part of the question done. Um, let's have a look. The number of ancestors of this B in each generation can be calculated using this formula here. So this is really your Fibonacci sequence. So GN plus 2 is equal to um, the previous term plus the previous, uh, previous term, if you like. So GN plus 2 is equal to GN plus 1 plus GN. So where G1 is 1, G2 is 1, and so on, as in the diagram. So use the formula to calculate the number of ancestors in G6 and G7. Well, I predicted here that it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 6 and 7 here, 8 and 13. Well, let's use our formula here. It should, uh, it should be the same anyway. So let's just see, do we get that? Well, G6, <coughs> we're looking for G6 here. That's going to be equal to G5 plus G4. G6, this is N plus 2, so N plus 1 is going to be 1 less. And GN here is going to be one less than that again. So G6, that's just going to be um, 5 and 4. So we have 5 and 4 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's going to be 8 here, yeah. So this is going to be 8. And G7 then. G7, that's going to be equal to G6 plus G5. So that's going to be 13. Okay. Now, um, next one. The number of ancestors can also be calculated by using this particular formula here. Use this formula to verify that the number of ancestors, um, to verify the number of ancestors in G3. Well, G3 here had um, two, uh, two here, okay? So let's see, do we get two? So let's see, GN. <clears throat> so we want G3. So let me just change this. G3 then. We are looking for G3. So that's going to be equal to 1 plus square root 5 to the power of n. In our case, n is 3 minus 1 minus root 5 to the power of n, again, which is 3. And that's all over 2 to the power of n, which is 3 times root 5. Root 5 here, actually. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let me just increase this a little bit. Okay. Now, um, okay, let's have a look here. Um, how are we going to do this? Let's see. 1 plus um, root 5 to the power of 3 actually works out to be, uh, you can do this um, kind of long way if you like. I'll let you do it yourselves, it's easy enough. You can multiply the 3 out or use um, Pascal's triangle or the binomial expansion. Whatever way you want to do this, you can just expand this out. But what you end up with is uh, 16 plus 8 root 5 uh, minus, and here you end up with uh, 16 minus 8 root 5. Okay, and down here then we've got 2 to the power of 3, which is 8 root 5. Okay, so this will give me 16 plus 8 root 5 minus 16 plus 8 root 5. And then on the bottom here we end up with 8 root 5. So just finish this off here so we can see that this 16 and this 16 minus 16 here will give me 0 8 root 5 8 root 5 that's 16 root 5 and that's divided by 8 root 5 and we can see that that's just they will just give, give us 1 and 8 into 16 will give us 2 so we did predict we would get 2 and we did in fact get a um, the number of ancestors in G3 is 2 so that's perfect Okay, so let's, um, oh, that's it. Sorry, I thought there was another part. That's actually it for, 
Uh, question nine. 